bustling life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 242. It is July... Late on July 24th or early July 25th, depending on when you're listening. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things that we can't talk about right here on the first and only wrestling podcast. Exactly correct. Liam is at TWL underscore podcast on Twitter. I am an editor at WrestlingObserver.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, TWL underscore podcast. We haven't really figured out what we're doing over there yet, but (laughs) we can't stop. We can't start making money on our YouTube channel until we have a thousand subscribers. And at last check, I think we had seven. So (laughs) certainly a ways to go there, but we're playing the long game. That's right. All right. Uh, It feels like this was 300 weeks ago now, but there was a WWE pay-per-view last weekend. It was the Extreme Rules show, and they followed that up with a episode of Monday Night Raw that we both watched, and neither of us can remember a damn thing from it. (laughs) That's that's not entirely true, but it's not that far off. Yeah, I mean, when if I once once we start talking about it, I'm sure some things will will jog our memory. But uh, yeah, I guess starting with the pay per view, which I I hate to correct you so early in the show, but it was the horror show at Extreme Rules. That's right. They did the Halloween th- themed pay per view in July for some reason. Naturally, uh, there was a swamp fight. <laughs> which, Boy, was there. Which. I'm not sure what happened. Um, it was very difficult for me to follow. So uh, uh, the the first one, this first Bray Wyatt thing that everybody loved at WrestleMania was like it was just like nothing but insider jokes and mm-hmm. like and references and stuff. Which I mean, you can talk about if that's appealing, but I mean, they don't really have anything left but the hardcore fans. So why not just? That was wacky fun, and Cena's doing the NWO gimmick and whatever. All right, that's fun and wacky. And then they did, like, the Money in the Bank thing, which was fine. And the the the, the what was it? the graveyard match. And those are all fine and good. And then this one, it was like, they pun- this was more like what I expected when, when we heard that WWE was going to be going to more cinematic matches, which is... It was like some guys punching, and then Bray cut a promo, and then some more guys punching, and then some more punching, and then Alexa Bliss was there for some reason, and then it was very dark and hard to see, and then uh, the poor man's murder clown appeared out of the water at the end, and that was the end of the show. Yeah, they, um, they tried to rip off some of the uh, the Matt Hardy final deletion stuff. I don't think it worked particularly well. I don't think anyone came out of that better than they went into it. Like, what's the big reveal at the end? That the Fiend still exists? I suppose. Because I guess he hasn't been the Fiend on TV in, like, a few months. I suppose that's supposed to be the idea. Uh, even though... Like, was there, it's not like there was a write-off for him or anything, right? I mean. No, he just kind of stopped showing up and then Braun wrestled Sweater Bray. And then (laughs) Sweater Bray disappeared too. And then Swamp Bray came back. And now, and now Psycho Clown Bray is back. (laughs) Cool. And the Universal title was uh, not up for grabs. Uh, Oh, thank heavens. Yes, so. Uh, this has got to be like one of the worst title runs ever. This Bray Wyatt, <laughs> like it was a bad Braun idea. Braun Strowman's put... the champion, by the way. Oh right, 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 right. That's what I meant. <laughs> uh, like it was a bad idea putting the title on him anyway, but they f- felt like they were booked into a corner. <laughs> Bill was going home after Mania, so 
Right. So they put the title on Bray, but or on uh, I keep saying that on Braun. <laughs> we have Bray and Braun. Yeah, they put the title on Braun, uh, but they've had ample opportunities to take it away from him, and they uh, they just they just don't. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just it's just kind of floating along, uh, much like Braun Strowman, who we can only assume is still floating in that swamp as we speak. Yeah. Uh, the other, uh, the WWE title match on the show, I'm told it was very good, but there's some kind of disconnect in my brain when Dolph Ziggler comes on television <laughs> where I, he he just cannot hold my attention at all. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. I, tr- I tried to watch that match, but I couldn't tell you one spot from it. Uh, did you watch it? Do you think it was good? I mean, in the same way that I think any Dolph match is fine, it was fine. Like, <laughs> like I think of it's funny you mentioned that because I think we've talked about this before on the show. But like, I think of Dolph that way. I think of the Miz that way. I think of Natalia that way. Where it's like nothing they do. I mean, Dolph. Dolph doesn't really actually. Dolph doesn't even really fit in this category because I hate him. But <laughs> like with Miz and and Natalia, it's like there's nothing wrong with most of what they do, and they're they're fine in the ring. But there's nothing they can do in a wrestling match that will interest or surprise me like ever. <laughs> and that's kind of where Dolph is from an in ring standpoint, from a personality standpoint. I detest him and wish him ill. Sure. But um, but from an in ring standpoint, uh, I mean, yeah, they they. <laughs> They did the thing where it's like, okay, Dolph gets to pick the step. So he picks <laughs> that he he can use weapons and Drew can't. And if Drew gets countered out or DQ'd, he loses the belt. And I was like, all right. As far as like not being a total idiot when someone's like pick the stip, he was at least he wasn't like, it's a strap match or something. <laughs> um, something stupid like that. Uh, I was like, all right, that's not that's not the stupidest version of that. But at the end, I'm like, but if you can pick something that specific shouldn't you be like you have to tie your hands uh, together behind your back and i have a gun and <laughs> i'm it's legal for me to shoot you so get down on the ground and let me pin you or i'm gonna murder you with this gun which is legal for me to do via this wrestling contract we both signed <laughs> yeah pretty big logical there Finn. i don't know it just always sticks in my head where it's like if you're gonna go that specific with where Dolph could make such a ridiculous stiff as that he could use weapons and the other guy couldn't. It's like, okay, well, why don't you just like Drew can only hop on one foot in the match, and if his second foot hits the ground, he's disqualified and he loses the belt. Yes, it's very silly. If and it would take like two lines in a promo to explain this by saying like it has to be an established match type that WWE will sanction, blah blah blah. But mm-hmm. they they just. They don't. They don't even go to that step. So they're nope. Yep. Um, uh, to answer your question, no, I don't remember if the match was good or not. Okay, good. Uh, tag team opener uh, Cesaro and Nakamura won the SmackDown tag titles. Who could possibly care? <laughs> I'm just like, I I have seen Kofi Kingston tape some pretty ridiculous bumps on these no fans shows, and I'm like, man, they do not deserve you trying this hard. Oh, absolutely not! Absolutely not. They did a uh, they did a tables match, which is as stipulations go, it's not the worst, but it's it's a lot of guys uh, moving furniture or, around, mm-hmm. and that's that doesn't uh, always make for the most exciting uh, spectacle. But I thought I thought that was fine. Hey, Kevin Owens wrestled on the pre-show. Good for him. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> He's going to get a pre-show stopper weight belt like the Ryback did. Sure. Uh, Bailey beat Nikki Cross. Uh, Seth Rollins ripped Rey Mysterio's eye out. Sure did. That was a letdown. Well, yeah. I mean, as the story goes, they filmed something more um, uh, visually interesting, I guess. And it was... Which, I mean, think of what this could possibly mean. But apparently it was so (laughs) hokey and bad considering what the main event of that show was something was so hokey and bad that Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn hated it and wouldn't put it on the show. (laughs) Right. 
Right. You did get like one good still shot of Ray like holding a fake eyeball in his hand, but you really mm-hmm. had to you really had to look for it. <laughs> it yeah. Was, yeah, that was disappointing. Uh it was a good match though. Like it wasn't like a blood feud where they're trying to rip each other's eye out. Uh like you would uh, you know. They didn't do a brawl. They did like a wrestling match. But yeah. It was fine. <laughs> So imagine if you just let those guys have a regular wrestling match sometime. Probably would be really good. Yeah. So uh Ray, I guess, hasn't signed his contract. That that selfish man trying to ask for more money. Yeah, he he had the audacity to ask for a raise in the middle of a pandemic, and they're like, oh, we're not giving out raises. <laughs> right. And they're like, Did you just sign the most uh did you just have the most profitable quarter in the history of your company? Yeah, still not gonna do it. Well, I don't know. Do you expect him to show up somewhere else? I mean, n- no, because <laughs> he's not a young man, and I have to imagine that just from like merchandise and and masks and action figures and video games and whatever, there's a lot of stuff that WWE can make you money on, and you don't have to even be around that much on the actual show that while other companies may be working on that or may have minor deals are not are not quite as well of a well-oiled machine a well-oiled marketing machine as WWE is so i kind of expect he'll be back but i i don't know like i guess he could wind up in AAA or or, or somewhere obviously AEW would be the obvious north american promotion for him to or, or us promotion for him to work in if he if he left WWE but I don't know. I just, especially because they keep involving his son in it, I assume that's also like a factor here. It's like if you signed Ray, you gotta you gotta sign his son Walter. And <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's part of the deal. If Ray goes elsewhere or not, his his large adult son. Yes. Uh, Oscar and Sasha Banks had a really good match on that show uh, with one of the worst finishes of all time. Yeah, that's uh, that was very. Uh, I hate. I don't like to throw this out willy nilly, but it was very. It was a very WCW thing. Yeah, um, or TNA for that matter. Like it was just <laughs> very, very good match. Just two people going back and forth. They're wrestling for a belt. They want to prove that they're better than the other one. Having a really good match, and then the finish is. Uh, a heels friend got in the ring and put on the ref's shirt and counted the pin and aggressively yelled at the person holding the bell to ring the bell. And then the announcers had to like, pretend like they didn't know for sure whether or not that meant Sasha actually won the belt or not. Right. Um, which again, in WCW or TNA, it's possible that that would have been an official <laughs> title change. So uh, that just added to it was when the announcers were like, oh, I don't know. Instead of just being like, this is ridiculous. They're just running away because they think they can't beat Asuka and they're, they've stolen her belt. They're like, <laughs> I, I, what's going on? Who's the rightful women's champion? We don't know. It's like, what, what are you talking about? You don't know Byron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, there were there were finishes on that show that were designed to try to Build up interest in Monday, in Monday Night Raw the next night, and you know they pushed Big Show and Randy Orton in a in an uns, unsanctioned match for like uh, uh, seven days, at really hard, and you know they had the second worst audience they've ever had on Monday night. So, <laughs> but the Sasha and Oscar angle did lead to the unadvertised returned return of Stephanie McMahon. Thank goodness. Thank goodness the inventor of women's wrestling has come back to to write things and uh, make sure that none of the women uh, in the ring looked like too big of a star. Right. And to make sure that she didn't get the stink of these awful ratings on her, it was unadvertised. That's right. <laughs> Can't blame her. No. Of course, then... Shane is like, yeah, advertise my return, Dad. <laughs> it's terrible terrible and then uh uh yeah so randy orton got got put over strong in the main main event so yeah watching raw was fascinating because yes there was some fallout 
they basically saved all of the fallout and big quote unquote big stars for that third <laughs> hour um mm-hmm. so like the first two hours were not was not a bad show i didn't think but it's mostly built around like there's whatever they're doing with uh, they had Mustafa Ali return, and he got his first name back. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a lot of minor stuff. It's like U.S. title stuff and tag team stuff and whatever stuff. Stuff that obviously Vince McMahon doesn't actually care about. Right. But they. But and then the other things you had, you had like a big Randy Orton promo hyping up this main event. You had a hilarious, mostly just because of what year it is, a hilarious hype video for the Big Show. Um, like, I mean, the video itself is obviously very good. Like WWE's video, uh, package people are incredible and probably underpaid, but, uh, but it was like, it's a video package for the large show for Paul White (laughs) here, twenty like going back to 1995 WCW all the way through to like present day. And it's like, look, based on the age of who is watching your shows, there is no one watching this show that doesn't know who the big show is. (laughs) Right. Uh, but despite all of that and the big hype, and as you mentioned, hyping it for over a week and hyping it on the pay-per-view, uh, that third hour still just sank, sank like an albatross. Yeah. Yep. It was, uh, it was bizarre. <laughs> and the, I mean, they clearly structured that show to try to keep the audience for all three hours, which it sounds like, well, duh, but, they very often don't do that. There was like the week at the beginning of the year where they were going up against like the college football championship or something where they, and they had Steve Austin on the show and they put him on in the first segment mm-hmm. <laughs> and then punted the remaining two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> it's like, yep. So it's like, well, they don't always uh, structure a show to try to get you to watch all three hours, but they did this week and it was not successful. So, I don't know what that means other than stuff that we've already talked about on this show other than I think they made a big mistake by not shutting down. Baseball came back this week and the first nationally televised baseball game did the best number or did the largest audience for a regular season baseball game in nine years. <laughs> like Pretty wild. Like, it was just a, it was a random like Nationals Yankees game, but because there hasn't been team sports um, here in North America for months, mm-hmm. the, it, it got a big number. So they 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 should have shut down and and come back with a big homecoming show or whatever sometime next month. But instead, we've had months and months of pandemic wrestling. <laughs> yeah it's uh i i like i don't know like the idea of okay we're building around the old guys because they draw numbers doesn't seem to be working any more than the previous uh guy in charge this idea of you know picking a few young people to try to build around um like i said they're still they're still building or they're still use utilizing a fair amount of young talent but they're very clearly kept at a certain level, and it's right. The main events are obviously we're, we're heating up Randy Orton because he's probably going to wrestle Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. And if I had, if I was a betting man, I'd say he's probably winning the belt. <laughs> Depends whether or not Vince reads that note he writes to himself. <laughs> Push short. Push, Push short. <laughs> he finds this notebook. It's just scribbled on every page. <laughs> every every few months he finds it. He's like, "Oh, what should I do? I need I need I need to consult my secret good booking ideas notebook." And he opens it up and it's push Orton more. Sometimes it's with an explanation <laughs> point. Sometimes it's with a question mark. Yeah, but yeah, it's always the answer is always to push Randy Orton more. But I just feel like once you give somebody two straight Dolph Ziggler title matches, that means the bloom is off the rose with you <laughs> as a as a world champion, and therefore they're gonna they're gonna put it back on Randy. <laughs> and Randy and Edge is gonna be a, a world title program later this year. Very very well could be. Um, by the way, they made Dolph look like a real. Like a real bitch. (laughs) 
he basically cried and got on his hands and knees and begged for a rematch <laughs> from Drew. <laughs> like, have you no dignity, sir? <laughs> I mean, clearly not. <laughs> Look at right. his hair. Look at well, his dumb gear. <laughs> well, all right. Um, yeah, so good. You know, not not a lot of good stuff on Monday Night Raw this week. Uh, you talk. You touched briefly on. Uh, <laughs> There being a new a new creative regime in WWE, uh, the Good Brothers, Gallows and Anderson, got some buzz last weekend. They dropped like a two hour and twenty minute podcast where they buried Paul Heyman, and were very careful not to bury Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> and they blamed Paul Heyman for lying to them and getting. They buried him for lying to them and blamed him for them getting fired. <laughs> interesting very interesting well yeah I mean the obvious thing here is which is so funny because obviously the deal used to be the more you buried Vince the more he wanted you back so right. yes. that was the old way but now I guess the new way is you can't you gotta criticize everybody around him but you can't ever criticize him if you wanna if you ever wanna work there again but um, yeah I mean that 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 podcast was fine I couldn't listen to the whole thing. I think those guys are entertaining. I like Rocky Romero. There was a fourth person there that I'm not a huge fan of, so I didn't really get to watch a ton of it. Um, but, I mean, that that thing about them hating Paul Heyman, and don't get me wrong, like, and that's something I don't think we've talked about on the show. We talked about it off the air a few weeks ago when, I guess, when AJ Styles was first, like, you know, yelling about Paul Heyman on his Twitch stream or whatever. Big mad. Um, he was big yeah. mad. Yes. Um, which is that, like, for years and years, Paul Heyman had that reputation of being, like, this shyster, swindler, will lie, will say one thing to your face, and then stab you in the back. Type. Like, that was Paul Heyman's reputation in wrestling, right? Yes. Like, good creative mind, terrible businessman, and will double-cross you in a second if he thinks it'll help himself out. Yes. Like, that... And then, like, he spent the last decade, or most of the last decade, whenever he came back with Brock, like, cultivating this, like, kindly uncle image, because he, like, <laughs> buddied up to Roman Reigns and Charlotte and a lot of, and Renee Young and, like, a lot of other people that are now, like, full-time main event talent. Mm-hmm. And so now he sort of, so, like, that reputation was changed. And obviously, it always helps when you're a good performer on television. That sort of gets the stink of how how you are or aren't a bad person <laughs> off of you um, right. and then yeah this so this story coming out about Paul Heyman just being like a liar and promising them a big a big push and then not delivering on that and I was like well that just sounds like every story I heard about Paul Heyman before like 2013 doesn't it <laughs> yep and then yep. I mean obviously the funny part is, is them burying him like oh Vince wasn't going to fire us, but then Paul Heyman told him to fire us. It's like, <laughs> Vince still said yes. Even even if we accept that that is the factual truth, that Vince right. McMahon had never <laughs> once thought about firing uh, Gallows and Anderson, despite the fact that he fired like everybody else that signed one of those big deals in the last 18 months. Yes. Um, even if we accept that that is the God's honest truth. Um Vince still could have said no when Paul brought their names up and he yes. didn't. Yeah. Vince McMahon fired them. It's not like whatever you think of Paul Heyman. And again, sounds like he's a liar. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that like, I, I couldn't wrap my head around that being like, other than we want to work there again someday. So we're trying to be very nice and not burn bridges. But like, I mean, and I think gallows may have like, offhandedly mentioned like well you know it's still Vince's company but yeah it's, and then he, went, then he went right back to burying Heyman for another 10 minutes and I'm like look I have no doubt that Paul Heyman is a liar and a bad person but also <laughs> he didn't fire you <laughs> yes yes yeah I'm, I, I don't know if there's a, ho- a whole lot else that we can add to the uh, to, to the discourse here about this mm-hmm. um, other than you know, they were like, they were pretty negative on Triple H for basically saying whatever it took to get them to sign. And it's yes. like, well, well, 
that was uh, that was his job. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I I I I don't I don't know what these guys ex- expected. <laughs> I'm I too am shocked that an executive in a multi billion dollar corporation would be a slimy liar. (laughs) And as you briefly mentioned, uh, Rusev signed big deal last year. Uh, He's gone. Uh, Mike and Maria signed ridiculous deals last year. (laughs) They're gone. Uh, Lana signed ridiculous deal last year is not gone. Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> um, people that complained about Saudi travel, uh, Curtis Axel, he's gone. You know, you can uh, you can pick pick your poison here. Was it they were branded as complainers? Because of complaining about traveling back from Saudi Arabia when they may or may not have been held hostage. Uh-huh. <laughs> or because they signed a deal that was probably uh, a crazy deal to sign uh, a lower mid-card tag team to. Uh, pick your reason. Uh, they, they got let go. And, right. and they have work now. So I, I don't... It's hard for me to feel super bad for those guys. <laughs> Like I like yeah. them, I like them, and they're super entertaining. But um, they also detailed how basically they burned a bridge with AEW uh, <laughs> to, to sign that deal. So it's like, well, you guys were completely ruthless and <laughs> uh, actually double crossed right. people that you thought were your friends. Right, you uh, leveraged your real life friendships <laughs> to get a better deal with your current <laughs> boss. R- right, and then. Uh, you know, the same thing happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet irony. But right, I mean, I guess things aren't too bad because the the Good Brothers did show up on uh, on the Young Bucks YouTube show. So I guess things aren't too frosty. But I I, I, I guess there's a difference between being buddies and being uh, wanting to do business. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, so they're in uh they're in the barren wasteland that is Impact Wrestling. <laughs> who uh <laughs> yeah, Eddie Edwards is their champion now, so you know, yeah, that would have been the... that would have been cool like half a decade ago. Yeah, the Motor City Machine Guns are back and like I love the Motor City Machine Guns. They're like one of my favorite acts when I was actually watching TNA regularly. And I saw that they came back and like every time anything like remotely cool sounding happens in impact, I go, "Ah, that's a shame. I'm never going to see that Um, (laughs) because I just one, I don't think uh, I even get access TV anymore. And uh, so even if I wanted to watch it, I don't think I could, but it's like, I'm not gonna, (laughs) it's, it's too late, man. Like it's impact and it's impact with no fans. It's not even, it's not even the 50 people from wherever wherever undisclosed location in Orlando, Florida, they film these days. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess we can move on to Wednesday night stuff. Um, AEW handedly won the uh, the ratings battle, if it you can call it that anymore, on Wednesday nights. They had a show. I didn't think there was a lot of uh, bad on that show, other than Ivelisse and Diamante. Mm -hmm. Um, But it just felt like a show. And even when they announced the lineup last week, it didn't feel like this was a show, but they were. But this is going to be must-see television. And, um, I mean, Sammy Guevara's back. He's he's cured. He's rehabbed. (laughs) He's scared from being a dick. He's scared. That was well, quick. Yeah, I guess someone said somehow if you add it up, it was 30 days. It doesn't really feel like it was 30 days, but did they re- was this like is this like Major League Baseball injured list reports where they like suspended him retroactively to a certain date or something? Sure, makes sense. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think the show was bad. I was fascinated by the fact that apparently people were really into that Young Bucks match for some reason. Um, not that it was a bad match or anything. It was. It was a fun 
you know, walk, walk and brawl as they say, but uh, it, like did more viewers than the Adam Cole versus Keith Lee double title match did on NXT a couple weeks ago for some reason. So I just think this is why like serious ratings talk is like the death is like death to me <laughs> because nothing ever makes sense. <laughs> nothing ever makes sense with these numbers. Uh, you know, NXT came off of winning like three straight weeks and then did two of the worst numbers they've ever done on USA Network. And AEW just threw together, slapped together like a random show <laughs> a week after having a world title match and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, that And this show did better. And the Young Bucks versus the Sex Perverts did a million <laughs> viewers. So... Yeah, very little, very little makes sense. That match had a cool finish, but I thought the rest of it was just, it was fine. Like, I think, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much my review of that entire show. Hey, on NXT, uh, new double champion Keith Lee <laughs> gave up one of his titles. <laughs> yeah, they just, they do this every time. And I just, I don't. <laughs> Why, why, why you don't have to book this way? Like, you don't, I know this is like it's beating your head against the wall, but it's like, if you didn't want to beat the guy, then just don't book him in a double title match. Just have him lose the North American title a month ago or whatever, and then build him up for the world title. And, and uh, he could, he could win it. Like, and that would be fine. Instead, they have him win both belts, and then he's just like, "Nah, I'm done. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be this champion anymore." It's just, I, I, that's, it just frustrates me that when they do this, it's like, well, why book a double title match? Other than, well, you did it to pop a rating for one week, I guess. Right. And then they're like, well, now we got to get that second belt off of him. Well, it's like, well, if you didn't want him to be a double champion. Just don't book him in that match. <laughs> That's the solution to the, well, they didn't want to beat him. Well, don't make him a double champion then. <laughs> yes. It's very silly. Make, what does it say about the title of the guy doesn't care to defend it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, these are all questions that they uh, probably didn't ask themselves and uh, therefore don't care what the answer is. So. Yep. <laughs> it's... At least they had when Becky when Becky won the two belts, she like defended both of them and lost it to Charlotte or whoever. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> like she got to be the champion for like a month before they took one of them off of her. And at yes. least they she lost in an actual wrestling match instead of just being just of just walking to TV one day and being like, "Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. You can have that one back." Yeah. So, Raw Women's title match coming up on Monday. Uh, is Drew and Dolph for the title on Monday also? People have told me that. <laughs> but I have not seen that advertised anywhere. Um, and when they did the segment on television, they did not mention a date when the match would be happening. So, it's possible. It is quite possible. But I do not know. <laughs> all right. All right. Well... I'm glad at least that I'm not going crazy because I watched that segment and I'm like, okay, this match is going to happen at some point. But then the website I work for was reporting like this is going to be on Raw. And I'm like, did we watch the same thing? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's quite possible that's true. But I, I'll just say that from what I watched on the show, I did not get the impression that it was this week. So we're recording this during SmackDown, and a commercial f for Monday's Raw just aired, and the only thing they're pushing is the women's title match. So, okay, I, maybe it'll be in two weeks. I don't know, um, but uh, SummerSlam is the next pay per view. No fans uh, in Boston, so it's not going to be in Boston. Does that mean they want to run in front of fans? I mean, we know we've been talking about it. Like they're they're itching, mm -hmm. they're ready. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, and I know I think Stephanie McMahon in her uh, address of racial inequality or whatever she did this week uh, in that one interview, I think she mentioned that she thinks there's going to be. She said something like there will be fans sooner than later or 
sooner than people might suspect or something like that. So I assume they have some sort of idea. Weird. All right. Uh, New Japan uh, Sengoku Lord is coming up in just a few hours. And Hiromu Takahashi is wrestling evil for the IWJP heavyweight and, and, and intercontinental titles on that show. Even though he's a junior heavyweight in a company where they are very strict about keeping that weight split. This has never been addressed. Why junior heavyweight <laughs> is wrestling for the two top heavyweight titles. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Kazuchika Okada against Yujiro Takahashi. <laughs> Friggin' and, Matt, New Japan Mad Libs this match. <laughs> and Shingo Takagi against El Desperado for the never open weight title of the top three matches on that show. Um, two of those three matches are going to be really good. It's just. Um, the show's not lighting my world on fire. I'm a huge Hiromu fan, but for uh, some reason, not really feeling this one. Well, I think it's because you mentioned it, like the when whether it's in tournaments or tag matches or whatever, the heavyweight always pins the junior heavyweight. So, yes, in New, in New Japan. So I don't think there's a lot of drama. Um, not that again, I'm sure it'll be a very good match, but it's hard to feel like it's there's even the smidgen of a chance that you could see the title change hands. And so that match is kind of while good is is left is not super exciting and then it's look i've i i am not an expert in in japanese professional wrestling but i've been watching new japan for a few years now never seen yujiro takahashi have a good match <laughs> i don't know that i've ever actually seen him in a singles match unless he was in a g1 somewhere that i've forgotten about um and yeah, I mean, I, I think I think your best bet for like a really exciting good match is probably the Takage El Desperado match because they was it was it in the New Japan Cup? They just had a, a match not too long ago. Mm, mm, Am I thinking of somebody else? Ishii and Desperado had a banger. That's, that's what I'm thinking of in the New Japan Cup. It's possible that they did too, but I no, I don't think they did because Ishii eliminated Desperado. And show eliminated Shingo. So okay. Uh, yeah, Desperado really showed a lot in that Ishii match, but uh, most people who who wrestled Tomohiro Ishii look really good. That's true. We've talked about it quite a bit. Yeah, although well, Shingo's Shingo's no slouch himself. No, no, definitely not. Yeah, I expect that'll be a really good match. But yeah, yeah as far as that, that's third on on, on underneath to uh, rough uh, main events and co-main events there. And then they immediately launch their next tour. <laughs> the Summer Struggle Tour. Oh, another sweet irony. <laughs> Man, they really uh, they really were prophetic in the names of some of these shows. <laughs> they were. They were. Um, all right. I think we've covered quite a bit here. Is there anything else that you would like to do, discuss? No, we've, uh, I think we've jumped, jumped all around the world of professional wrestling. And uh, yeah, I think we can we can go ahead and wrap it up for this week. Watching Matt Riddle and Baron Corbin in the second week of their feud, and it's just like, why, why are we doing this? Is he gonna be like, ah, you're bald. Ah, you don't wear shoes. <sighs> All right, see you next Pro- week. Yeah, probably. And Corbin's gonna say stuff that like you know Vince McMahon is thinking about Matt Riddle. <laughs> right. All right. All right. All right, everybody. Till next time, I meet them. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. got to give the people what they want here and uh what is your review of the surprise taylor swift album uh i've only been able to listen to about the first seven or eight songs so far it's a mm-hmm. 16 song album mm-hmm. so i it's it's fine it's very mellow um um it's it's not it's not her standard 
super pop fair. Um, mm-hmm. But I like it. Like her voice sounds good on it, and the music is generally pleasant. Um, she has a song with Bonnie Vare that is actually pretty good on it. So I, for what I've heard so far, I'm enjoying it. It's not. It's hard to compare it to other albums, but it is. It is good. All right. Well, that's good news. Speaking of giving the people what they want, what what's going on with Fraser Observer Radio this week? <laughs> yeah, it's still Christmas in July on the Hallmark Channel. So ah, uh, I haven't watched crap. any Fraser. If only there were some sort of device <laughs> <laughs> streaming service, but you know, no such device exists to my knowledge. So <laughs> it's an idea whose time has come, really. Perhaps. Speaking of streaming service, since we don't have Fraser to talk about, I just want to talk about how I hate uh the way major league baseball does business okay because i would i would love to pay for mlb.tv if it meant i could watch the orioles because i no longer have regular cable right um and it's like you know whatever 100 bucks a year or whatever i would love to just pay that and be able to watch the orioles whenever i wanted to Mm -hmm. Uh, but i can't because you can't watch home games on mlb.tv so i guess i could watch tonight's game because they're in boston but then when they come home to play, despite the fact that it's not like even blackouts make sense anymore because nobody can go to the games. So it's not like I'm <laughs> choosing to stay home and stream when I could be out there buying a ticket. Or, so there's really no reason for that policy to still exist. So uh, here I am trying to give a, my, a major giant corporate, corporation sports league organization my money and they just... They just won't take it because they they won't just let me watch the team I want to watch when I want to watch it. Yeah, that's that's a flaw. It's definitely a flaw in their business plan. Um, it they're they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't though, because cable television pays for the sport. <laughs> I mean, sure. they're. They're they're stuck in in the same. They're I guess they're more stuck than the NFL because the NFL is all of the games are on national uh, television in the NFL. But I mean, regional cable pays for the sport, so they're not gonna cannibalize regional 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 cable. Even though the time has come, really, where you can get everything else whenever you want. Now, what that has to do with away games, uh, I, I, I don't know. And would the money be about the same? You know, you pay your five bucks a month or whatever for Masson that gets tacked onto your cable bill. Mm-hmm. Well, if if you paid a hundred bucks, <laughs> that actually probably would give them more money. So maybe my own argument doesn't make sense. hundred is more than five. Yeah, so, you know, even if it's over eight months or whatever, however long the season right. goes, you know, I don't know. It's weird. What do you think about 16 teams in the playoffs? Uh, it seems like too much, but whatever. This doesn't feel like a real season anyway, so just do whatever wacky ideas you want, I guess. Sure, why like, not? Maybe it'll be weird next year when we play a full season and there's, like, a team that's, like, 76 and... And 89 in the playoffs or whatever, that's going to be kind of weird. But, like, for this year, it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> let's, just, right. let's, just, let's just play around. Let, how about we just add an, an extra position just for fun? Let's just, <laughs> just, just sure. there's a, like, like Little League, there's a right, let's put a right center fielder out there now. Sure. And just let's, let's just, let's get a wacky with it this year. There's, there's no reason not to. Exactly. Yeah, there's no guarantee that it's, sticking around for next year um right and next year is where i mean 2022 is really gonna be a bunch of big changes anyway if they can come to an agreement on a labor deal which mm-hmm. <laughs> which based on <laughs> how hard it was to get this this season together and so well, that'll be interesting <laughs> yeah yeah well but i think 2022 we get universal dh and some kind, well, it depends, you know. It, you would ask me uh, before the pandemic, it's well, we're getting two extra, we're going to get a plan for, for an expansion plan, we're going to get two extra teams, 
mm-hmm. and we're going to get Universal DH, and we're going to get some kind of expanded playoffs. And now with pandemic, doesn't seem like a good time to be adding teams, but I don't know. You know, who knows <laughs> what the economy is going to look like in two to five years. Right. I try to keep on keeping on.